Good morning, students. Today we will continue with our chapter periodic table. We have said it in the last video that modern periodic table follows the modern periodic law according to which physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic number. This table was made by Henry Moseley. So as you can see the figure, this is the modern periodic table. The vertical columns in the periodic table are called the groups and the horizontal rows are called the periods. The modern periodic table has 18 vertical columns. As you can see, there are 18 groups, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. The last group of the inert gases is called the 18th group. It can be denoted by two types. In the old notations, the Roman numbers were used with the letters A and B. So the first group was first A, second, second A, then the transition elements were kept in the B category. So it was third B, fourth B, fifth B, sixth B, seventh B and in the eighth group three elements were kept. Then first B and second B and then third A, fourth A, 5th A, 6th A, 7th A and the noble gases, the zero group. In the new notation, the numbers from 1 to 18 are mentioned. So there are 18 groups in the modern periodic table. Elements of subgroup A, that is 1st A, 2nd A, 3rd A, 4th A, 5th A, 6th A and 7th A. <coughs> are called the main group elements or the representative elements or normal elements. These elements have their outermost shells incomplete. Elements of B group that is the elements in the group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These are known as the transition elements. They have their two outermost shells incomplete. Elements in the zero group or group number 18 are called inert gases or noble gases because they have stable electronic configurations and they hardly react with other elements. Now we'll study about the seven horizontal rows that are the periods. So there are seven periods in the periodic table. The number of shell present in an atom determines its period like in the first period the number of shell is 1, in second period the number of shells is 2, in the third period the number of shells is 3 and so on. It goes on increasing. Elements with electrons increasing arithmetically in their outermost shell that is one by one Till an octet is attained are placed in the same period. The last element of all the periods have the eight electrons in their outermost shell, except helium, which has got two electrons in, it, in its outermost shell. Elements are classified in following four types, representative elements, transition elements, inner transition elements and inert or noble gases. Classification is also done according to the S, P, D and F blocks based on the electronic configuration but it is not in the course of class 9. It will be studied in the higher classes. So first we will study about the representative elements S and P block elements. These elements have their outermost orbit incomplete. They include elements of group 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. 
Group 1 elements are also called alkali metals. They form strong alkalis with water except hydrogen. Group 2 is called the alkaline earth metals. They form weaker alkalis compared to first A group elements. Group 13 is called the boron family. Boron is the first member of the group. Group 14 is called the carbon family, carbon being the first member. Group 15, nitrogen family, nitrogen being the first member. Group 16, oxygen family, oxygen being the first member. And group 17 are called halogens as they are salt formers. The alkali metals or the group 1 are the most reactive metals that occur. They are known as alkali metals because they react vigorously with water to produce hydrogen and alkali solution. Halogens group 17 are the most reactive non-metals. They form salts on reacting with metals. The main characteristic of the representative elements are they include both metals and non-metals there is a regular gradation from metallic to non-metallic character as one moves from left to right that means on the le left side we get the metals and as we move this side the non-metals are found they form electrovalent as well as covalent compounds with non-metals the metallic nature increases Moving down any of these seven periods, as we come down in the group, the metallic nature increases. Metals which are good conductors of heat and electricity are present in groups first and second. Non-metals which are present in group 16 and 17 are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Some heavier elements like tin and lead exhibit variable valencies. That means valency is more than 1. The transition elements also called the D block elements. These include the groups 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11, 12. The main characteristics of the transition elements are all the elements are having high melting and boiling points. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. Some of the elements are attracted towards the magnet. Most of these elements are used as catalysts. They exhibit variable valencies and they form colored ions and colored compounds. The inner transition elements or the F block elements. These are the inner transition elements, the lactin lanthanides and the actinides. <coughs> Their characteristics are they are heavy metals with high melting point, boiling points. They show variable valencies. They form colored ions. And actinides are all radioactive elements. Some are not found in nature. They are made in special laboratories or you can say they are man-made. Elements of the zero group or you can say the 18th group are called the inert gases or noble gases. They have eight electrons in their outermost orbits except helium which has got two electrons. They do not react with other elements and are therefore called inert gases. The elements of the second period and the third period they show resemblance in properties with elements of the next group leading to a diagonal relationship. Such elements are called bridge elements. Example, lithium and magnesium, beryllium and aluminium, boron and silicon and so on. The third period elements are called the typical elements because they summarize the properties of their respective group and so-called the typical elements example sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur and chlorine the merits of the modern periodic table 
It is based on atomic number which is an even better fundamental property compared to atomic mass. Position of element in the table is related to the electronic configuration. It shows regular changes in properties of elements on moving across a period and down a group. Modern periodic table is easier to remember, understand and reproduce. Defects of the modern periodic table Position of hydrogen is still not satisfactory as its properties relate to both group 1 and group 17. It fails to accommodate the inner transition elements that is lanthanides and actinides into the main body of the periodic table. Thank you.